Melanie Shaw. <laughs> That's me. Um, Hennessy tasting. Hey. I'm just like so open to discuss like poop matters. Yes. Is because I <laughs> I find joy mm -hmm. um, with pushing boundaries. Please. Yeah. Like, uh, let me ask you: Have you sharded before? Past relationships. Ooh. I feel like you. Oh. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Even though yeah. my family is uh, immigrants from mm -hmm. Central America and yeah. I'm like first generation yeah. American, I just don't consider myself Afro Latina. So love, Cody, I love Cody. So he's Cody, white, it, Cody. I would, I would so hope, Cody. I, was, I sometimes I dream he's black. <laughs> Low key, I feel he's white chocolate. I'm just gonna put that out there. <laughs> I've had people slip in my DMs and ask me like, "How is it dating someone that is white, but you're supposed to be teaching our black students? Like, how is that?" Mm -hmm. And I think the two aren't related at all. You get struck and you ain't cool like huh? live life with no limits. My way, no gimmicks. Pro league, no scrimmage. Rise up, peace signs up now. What's up? Live in a and welcome lost, to we Jam no Packed. I'm your host Jamila and I have quite a guest, quite a treat for y'all today. Uh, she is a professor of Africana studies, public speaking, university writing, and she is a poet. She is a, a activist. Uh, her poetry was first published in Reasons to Never Return. Uh, she contributed in documenting the black experience, essays on African-American history, culture, and identity in nonfiction films. Her section is called A Glance at Her Story. She's a faculty editor for Captured, which is the student research journal for California State University, Northridge, CSUN. Uh, whoop, whoop. And uh, she also recently got an award for the Excellence in Teaching Award, uh, which was from CSUN's English department. And just in case y'all didn't know, she loves long walks to the toilet. It is where she gets all of her writing done. Ladies and gentlemen, I bring to y'all Melanie Shaw. Perfect introduction, if I might say so myself. <laughs> well, that's very. No one else agrees with me. I agree with myself. It was perfect. That's very kind of you, Melanie. <laughs> no problem. I'm a very kind person. So thank you for yes. inviting me to this podcast. It's my very first time being a part of a podcast. Um, I love interviews. I love networking. I love yeah. reaching out to like-minded individuals, especially yeah. women of color. Yes, you have to be able to represent in the community, in the culture, and Definitely. be able to. Um, just basically connect, yeah. build a community, bridge communication, find commonality amongst like-mindedness, and from there on, just continue to create and build, and like I said, bridge. Yeah. So let's do it. Let's do it. I'm down. I'm so excited that you're here, and, and thank you for being here and and uh, being on this journey with us uh, of, of the podcast and just... Uh, you know, being here for setting up and all that good stuff. So I appreciate you being here and and uh, excited to to get to it, get to it with you. Let's do um, it. So before we get started, though, your drink of choice. You had a couple of different options. I did. I'm uh, fancy. You are really real fancy. How apparently. really real fancy? Really I? real fancy. I don't know. So, you asked what I wanted to drink, <laughs> and if you ask me what I want to drink, I'm going to yeah. tell you what I want to yes. drink because yeah. my mom says a closed mouth doesn't get fed. So Hello. let me let you know yes, exactly. what I want to drink. Yes. So one of your options was Ciroc and pineapple juice. Yes. And then simple. simple. And then the other one was a Hennessy Moscow Mule ish type of concoction. Yes. And we have. Decided on the latter with Hennessy. Uh, some of you're us curious, c c curious, curious, <laughs> a little taste. Yes, yes, a little taste, a little taste. So, I mean, this is uh, we're all drinking it, uh, and this is this is actually pretty tasty. Um, what made you want to drink this? Um, I love Moscow mules, mm -hmm. big fan of vodka, big fan of just any kind of Moscow mule. Mm -hmm. Um, however, 
drinking Hennessy is a part of the stereotypical culture. Yeah. So I'm not yeah. going to lie. I love a little <laughs> Hennessy here and there. Um, as I see you got I love the it. pure white Hennessy, yes. which is something I've never uh, seen in person. And uh, it is very smooth. Straight um, from the so, Caribbean. So, yeah. So why not do a mixture of something that you truly love, a yeah. Moscow Mule, and put a little twist a cultural twist on yeah, it to make yeah. it something that you actually feel at home drinking yeah, yeah so definitely. it's a really it's a really good drink yeah um so hennessy i don't necessarily have the greatest track record with oh no you get sick uh sick or maybe very drunkish no. you know what fuck you brooke first fuck you brooke of the episode that's a thing it just makes me sleepy Oh yeah. shit! And okay. like real relaxed. Uh oh! So you about to be extra relaxed? No, like yeah, real relaxed. Yeah, yeah things yeah, might yeah. slip. You know what they <laughs> say about Hennessy? Like when you you know you give your date the Hennessy. Oh just shit! Like, That's like yeah, yeah. yeah, it's that yeah, it's, it's that, that type of drink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, uh, so we're gonna see how this episode goes. Yeah, it's a pregnancy drink. Hello, I'm gonna bring it tonight. <laughs> um, so we're all drinking Hennessy, uh, pure white as a backup, and now you're on pure white. I am. Uh, it which is very pure white. They do not pure white. It's pure white. But they do not sell it in the states, so this is gonna be very interesting of how it works out with your Moscow Mule. There's probably a reason why they don't sell it in the states. I feel like we might find out this evening. Okay. Maybe. I know. Possibly. You know, we are in the valley. <laughs> we are. <laughs> we are. We are. Something might happen. Yeah. You never Down know. Ventura. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> hey, y'all, look out on Ventura Boulevard. <laughs> If you see any light, bright activity, just uh, it's, just it's keep a, it's a, just, just keep just walking. Just honk your horn twice. Yeah, just, <laughs> eh, eh. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so before we start with the games, um, for y'all that uh, this might be your first episode listening, you may hear the pitter patting uh, sound, sweet sounds of Zora, my sweet trusty Papillon Chihuahua mix. But she is currently cuddled uh, next to next next to Melanie uh, doing her own thing, just chilling, um, just trying to get her camera time in. Yes, yeah, she is. Yeah, is she that, needs that fifteen. Is it fifteen seconds or fifteen, 15 minutes th- of fame? I don't know, Brooke. Which minutes? Is it minutes? She said minutes. Okay, minutes. Okay, minutes. Yeah. Okay, seconds yeah. is just too yeah. too quick. Short. Yeah, it's like it's just yeah. like <gasps> yeah, it's just like super short. So you may hear the sweet sounds of Zora. Um, <laughs> throughout the episode, uh, and I think that's pretty much all of the order of business. So we're gonna start this off. Uh, it's only appropriate as you enjoy talking about shit and poop, uh, and you are a writer, a poet. You have the sweet versatility of uh, words. I do, kind of, somewhat. <laughs> um, I think the only reason why people assume that I'm just like so open to discuss like poop matters yes. is because I <laughs> I find joy mm-hmm. um, with pushing boundaries, yeah, uh, making people uncomfortable, yes. maybe offending people just a little bit just so that I get that sense of who they truly are. Yeah, Because, you know, you have people that always say, you know, if you poop around me, if you fart around me, it's yeah. disgusting. I don't want to be around you. You're just pushing people out of their comfort level. Yeah. So for me, pushing someone out of their comfort level is just me finding their true self. I believe you should um, be around your significant other while they're shitting. I'm just going to put that out there. I think I I agree. I I agree. I completely agree with that. Mm -hmm. Like it's like it's you have to, right? Like you need to. You actually you need need to to. be able to release yourself. Yeah. You know, just let a strong shit go. Like in front of your go. Yeah, and a fart. And you know, if they walk out of the room, yeah. Ladies, ladies, ladies. That's how you know. <laughs> that's how you know that person isn't meant to be in your life. If it's somebody that gives you shit for taking a shit, please check it off your list. This is somebody that you yeah. don't need to be with because yes. they won't allow you to be your most vulnerable, yes, vulnerable and truest self. Because yes. do they not expect to take a shit around you? Like where are they going into the next room? Well, and it's not even room? yeah. What is it exactly? And it's not even like just shit. Like you should be able to pee. Like you should hear the sweet sounds of urine hitting the toilet bowl yes um you know splattering against and not walls. possibly a, a faucet no you know no. running a faucet while peeing because you're trying to mask the sounds of your of human your functions you should embrace it you should I agree you should 
that's I don't know. I, that's how I feel. But but this is also coming from a very suppressed person. I am a, a suppressed person. Um, you know, I used to hold in my farts. Why? You gonna hurt yourself? With I know, like that shit will creep up in your you back, give in your some, spine. Some spine cramps. I'm saying some gut but you know, cramps. But then your it, ovaries gonna be twisting. But then, like the flatulence happens when I sleep, and then it's like, well, I mean, it was bound to happen at some point. It was bound to be released. Like, let me ask you: Have you sharded before? Yes, I have sharded. When was the last time you sharded? Uh, you know, it might have been today. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? When you, when, you, when you feel it coming, like, mm, this is more than just a fart. Like, there is shit, shit packed in behind this. It's like your soul then it's just like, being mm, released. You know what? Like, let me just make a quick run for it somewhere. Yes. Comfortable. But speaking of comfortable, yes. we're going to get into our first game. The You know, uh, and pardon us. Kind of not really. Sorry, not sorry. Uh, that we're gonna talk about some shit, some more. Mm-hmm. Um, our next, our first game, uh, we're gonna play. It's a, it's a new game. Hmm. Shits and <laughs> giggles. <laughs> and for those that have listened before, it is basically a remix of the funnies. And Midori is going to explain how shits and giggles works. Okay, so for Shits and Giggles, a remix from Mel here, Mm -hmm. um, each person, Jamila and Mel, have written down sentences um, that is ridiculous or outrageous, and they're going to swap sentences and read them. Whoever giggles um, Mm. will have to tell us a ritual when they shit, Mm. basically. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's easy. I have several. I have a lot. And I've learned some new ones today. Okay. We're uh, that aren't compete, mine. Compete against each other. Ooh, it's a shit off. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I did make the mistake of saying let's put them all in one cup. Okay. Or, so, or you're and not I do. supposed to mix them up. Well, you know. That's okay. Would you really laugh at your own statement? Maybe. You know? I laugh at myself. I laugh at myself all of the time, and I think that's healthy to do. I think so. Decrease yeah. wrinkles. Hello. Decreased diabetes. That's what I'm saying. High blood pressure. Boom. All of that. You got to do it. Mm-hmm. You got to do Let's it. Let's do it. Yes. So, uh, guests first, ladies first. Oh, Go ahead. Okay. I will Let give you see. the. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna shake it up a bit, and then I'm just gonna put my put my little hand in there. Mm-hmm. Close my eyes. I'm just gonna grab one. Oh, it's probably shit. one of. Oh, it's Might one be. of yours. Oh, your, shit. Oh, she she looked your, at it. She was like, chicken scratch. Yeah, your terrible, <laughs> terrible penmanship. Oh, my God. Yes. That's so hard right um, now. Oh, ooh, I thought Zora or Zorro, my dog, that she is, took a shit in my car. She does take a lot of shits because I did see some shit on the floor once I arrived. Yeah, so let's let's talk about <laughs> your dog taking right. a shit, or maybe it's just, just like a spite shit. Maybe you just angered her that day, and she's just like, "I'm gonna get this bitch." She missed the pee pad first of all. Oh, poor thing. She missed poor, the pee poor pad. Thing. It's I, her fault. You know, she's gotten to be very <laughs> trifling, but I guess I kind of blurted out a little laugh. So I'll share my shit ritual. Um, I when I take a dump. Um, I like to take my shoes off and be comfortable and it doesn't, for the exception of if it's like a public bathroom or a park bathroom, okay. um, usually I will take my shoes off to take a shit. Mm. <laughs> pooping and farting. I don't like that I laughed at that. <laughs> pooping. <laughs> It just said pooping and farting. Yeah, I just put pooping the and farting. The word, because that's so funny to like read it and we're, to we're say all, it. We're already basically yeah. talking about yeah. flatulence. Yeah. So just talk, like pooping yeah. and farting, it, it's, it's an embarrassing subject to yeah. a lot of people, yeah. especially women. No one wants to poop or fart around yeah. their significant others. Yeah. And I continue to bring up the whole significant other premises mm-hmm. as well as being with your partner and being able mm-hmm. to do it comfortably is because let's face it, ladies. Yeah. We're not able to do it comfortably without, yeah. you know, being worried or embarrassed that somebody's going to judge yeah. us. So yeah. I'm just going to go ahead and take a drink because I did giggle a little bit because mm-hmm. we're already talking about poop. All so. right. Go ahead and give us one of your poop rituals as I also drink with you. Mm, um, I am not shy to bring food 
or drinks into the restroom while I'm sitting on a toilet and <laughs> actually taking a poop. No. I just think it actually helps with the uh, push down. Like okay. I feel like the more I eat or the yeah. more I drink on a the toilet, then yeah. I'm just going to have the best poop ever because <laughs> it's like the pressure from yes. me eating is, yeah. is actually pushing yeah. the the old poop down yeah, yeah, you know, yeah making yeah. room for the new poop yeah that's yeah, why yeah. i do that i think it works <laughs> fyi <laughs> <laughs> oh man i guess i gotta give a poop ritual too um <laughs> damn um okay so when i have to take a dump in a public bathroom I will literally wait until I stop hearing any noises, <laughs> including like when like the last person that's probably like it's almost like we're having a shit off. Like who is going to leave first to let the other one take a shit peacefully, peacefully. Um, I will hold it until they leave um, so that I can shit in peace and not like feel that anxiety of their stomping around the fucking bathroom having or shit off. having a shit off. Feel it. As, that was a deep fun fact. I feel like I do the same thing. <laughs> like I do not. I cannot be in a public restroom yeah. and have somebody yeah. shit it next to me. Yeah. And, it, and it's just like I always try to pick the stall yeah. where I feel like that person won't come next to yeah. me. Yeah. But they always come yeah. next to me. <laughs> and then I'm looking at what kind of shoes they yeah. got on. Yeah. And then I'm pulling out my phone trying to like, you know, yeah. put it on my Instagram. <laughs> like this bitch is next to me taking a shit with these <laughs> chanclas on. <laughs> chanclas, like, yeah. no. Yes. <laughs> 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 oh shit Alright um, Your turn <laughs> When you fart When nobody is around And then someone comes by And smells it Oh my gosh Especially elevators <laughs> When it gets trapped yes. Or like your own personal yes. car When you fart in your car <laughs> And you go into Ralph's yes. And you come back And it's, it's, and it's still, still there <laughs> It's still there Just trapped Just trapped in the closet Trapped in the closet <laughs> All right, so I guess you got to take a drink, and I'm, I'm just drinking right now. Yeah, just drink. Go ahead. Just drink to drink. What's the, another poop ritual of Melanie Shaw? Mm, I like to put on um, music that gets me hyped for the day. Ooh. Because, you know, when I'm on the toilet, that's like my very first thing that I do after I wake up. And I'm yeah. all about rituals. I'm all about routine. So if I'm about to set the mood for the rest of my day set that tone i need mm-hmm. to be able to like play something like win yeah, yeah. win 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> yes so i'm win. winning i'm winning on yes. the toilet i'm gonna win for the rest of my day <laughs> nice all right last one tampons and periods mm. No chuckles. Because it's serious. That is very serious. And that shit hurts like a motherfucker. It does. Yeah. I guess I'll open one more. Fuck it. Yeah, open another Fuck one. It. Growing up in South Central. No chuckles. Let's wobble. We're going to do one more. It's last crickets. one. Last one. Crickets. Last one. Last one. Past relationships. Ooh. I feel like you won it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I, think, I, I, I think it was my sound effect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it I'm was good. good. I'm good at those. I'm good at those. No, it's all good. I, I dig it. And you have a great poker face. So this is going to be, this next game is about to be this very interesting. Yes. Ooh. Ooh. Is it Mel Anse or is it? Who was the other character? Shelby. Shelby! Yeah, Shelby. Does Shelby come out when you drink? Shelby does come out. Shelby comes out when I'm drinking. Uh-huh. And if I'm with a friend that brings out my very worst energy. Mm-hmm. But my, my worst energy is my very best energy because that energy makes me feel like I'm living my best life yeah. ever. Like yeah. I can do anything that I need to do or mm-hmm. want to do. Yeah. That's when Shelby comes out because she's wild. Oh, shit. She's a wild girl. Okay. She's out mm-hmm. here. Yeah. She's. Yes. Oh, yes. shit. Okay, maybe we might be Shelby this evening. Though. I don't know if you want her to come out, but if you do, I'll drink a little bit more. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, now on to the next game. Uh, we are going to call it Les Performances. Oh, okay. And it's basically charades. 
just oh. a fancy ass. You're just French for that moment. French. Just for that, solely for that moment. Okay. Perfect. Solely for that moment. And for those that have never played charades, here is an explanation by the mystery voice. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, so charades is like Pictionary, um, mm-hmm. except that you act it out, mm-hmm. pretty much. So and you're gonna I will tell it. you what you need to act out, and the other person has to guess it. You have one minute mm-hmm. um, to guess what they are acting out, and if you don't get it, you drink. And hey, let us one know, minute. And let us know if it's a if it's a person, place, or thing, or a movie, or. TV show, something like that. I mean, that is like when in depth. That movie, it looked yeah. like you was eating ramen. I mean, like movie, yeah, 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 ramen, movie, <laughs> ramen, <laughs> ramen. Either, either will work for me. Yeah, yeah okay. I like, I like mine spicy. By the yes. way, yes. So we've got Midori as the timer as well, and she's also going to be giving them, giving us our uh, thing that we have to act out. Okay. So, for the performance, we've got Mel up. What, girl? It's only one of me. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to see how this goes, though. Oh, do I got to stand up? Yeah. yeah. No. Let us, okay. One word. First word. You. You. Woman. Uh, female, smile, face, cheek, uh, curves, what? I don't know. You, fuck you, what? Ah, uh, women. Ass, backs, hair, two, fuck, two words, three words, three words, you, 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 three words, god damn it. I don't know why we're playing this. Three words. You. Mary Tyler Moore. No. Uh, uh, three's company two. Okay, so three, three's company three. Uh huh. People, three people. Fuck. What was it? What is it? What was it? Three's a crowd. God damn it. <laughs> This is this is definitely le performance. I was performing. Yes. I did it. I hugged. Yeah, you sure did. You, 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 you gave me every everything. All okay, so I'm gonna take my drink. And then I get and then we gotta share a fun fact. So okay. uh, about ourselves. Mm-hmm. Okay. Doesn't have to be poop related. Okay, perfect. Yeah, uh, um Okay. Uh, and <laughs> y'all don't can't. Okay, so don't take this as a kindness for weakness thing. But I would rather not fight. Like I, I uh, <laughs> Melanie looks very confused, and I understand why. I take boxing classes. I can utilize those boxing skills at any time. But I would rather talk and not fight. I don't want to fight. Slavery? Oh shit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Milkmaid? Oh. Wedding. Getting married. Walking to the altar. Meeting your groom. Veil. Bride. Good job. Congratulations. Crying, emotions, already to vows, vows, marriage, wedding, relationship, marriage, down the aisle, walking down the aisle to get married, you're covered in a veil, you're crying, bitch is crying, yes, you're feeling the emotions, (laughs) you're feeling the emotions because you are ready to get married, you're virgin, you're virgin, you've been down this aisle before. Because you're not a virgin. You're crying. The veil is covering you. The veil is covering you. And... <laughs> That's the, the, the t- <laughs> oh, it was a bridesmaid. What? And you put the veil. Yeah, right? bride, 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 but she but kept doing this. Like, it was like, okay. You're a lot. No, what is this? But it's the, the veil. It's the 
veil. Bridesmaids don't have so on a veil. The that's like, what is getting married? And then it was like, yeah, girl, yeah, you got but it. But what is so this? Like, I'm a bridesmaid. Like, yeah, girl, you got it. No, no. Clearly, I don't go to a lot of weddings. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right uh <laughs> all right that was an epic fail on my part uh i'm gonna take my drink i drank my drink oh she made my oh okay, okay. so i will give y'all a fun fact <sighs> fun fact thank you Oh, I thought uh, I was the one I was supposed to give a fun fact because I didn't. I you didn't, didn't give a fun fact last time, huh? I didn't give a fun fact last time because. Well, I didn't get I it because I didn't get it. No, you didn't guess it correctly, so you gave a fun fact, right. and I didn't guess it correctly. Right. Because, so yeah, now right. it's time for me to yes. get a fun yes. fact exactly. because you manipulated me into thinking <laughs> that you were actually the bride and not the bridesmaid. <laughs> so therefore, I'm actually doing you a favor by giving you uh, a fun fact about myself. Um, so I'm going to pretend that I'm doing I'm it gonna take a drink enjoyably. Anyway. I'm going to take a um, drink anyway. <laughs> so fun fact about me is, okay, I think I'm going to get a little bit, a little, a little, uh, I guess, is, is it, is it personal? I guess I'll get personal. Why not? Let's yeah, get why personal. Not? Or, yeah. yeah, I guess, you know, I probably get a lot of angry people if I say this. They're probably mm-hmm. going to be like, she's wrong. Ah, yeah. ah, we hate her. <laughs> ah. <laughs> yeah, so like, even though my family is Central American and mm-hmm. my dad is fluent in Espanol, I do not consider myself to be an Afro-Latina at all. Really? That's a fun fact about myself. I do not identify myself as mm-hmm. such. Um, I accept the culture. I accept the whole community, the mm-hmm. Afro-Latin or Afro-Latin X community, mm-hmm. but I don't consider myself to be a part of that community, even though yeah. my family is uh, immigrants from mm-hmm. Central America and yeah. I'm first generation yeah. American. I just don't consider myself Afro-Latina. I know all. that. Your mom doesn't speak Spanish, and like you said, your dad speaks Spanish. Yes, my dad is fluent in right. Spanish. And you don't consider yourself Afro-Latina. No. Do you currently face any kind of, I don't know, backlash or just any kind of rhetoric or just commentary of, like, how can you not call mm. yourself Afro-Latina? That's, that's only when I am fully comfortable enough to reveal that to people because, mm-hmm. you know, no one really wants to find comfort or or, yeah. or joy in revealing something to someone and, you yeah. know, potentially having it backfire yeah. into your face. Like, yeah. no one says, let me go do right. that. Yeah. Right. right. So when I, when I do say that to people, everyone, of course, has questions. Yeah. And with those questions, I let people know. Yeah. I, I accept the community. I accept the culture. I accept the culture that I I grew up a part of. However, Mm -hmm. I think it's very important for me being a first generation black Mm -hmm. woman to, to actually identify myself as a first generation black woman before Mm -hmm. I can move on to the next category and say that I'm Afro Latina. Yeah. And there's levels to it. You know, I can say that I'm a first generation black woman in this Mm -hmm. country. Mm -hmm. So let me uphold that and let Mm -hmm. me see if I can become comfortable saying that yeah. and experiencing the black life on a day-to-day basis. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, maybe I might move on to saying, you know, I'm a light-skinned, biracial, African-American woman in the United States. And let me yeah. see, you know, what kind of conflict that that actually, you know, yeah. creates into my life. And then maybe mm-hmm. after that, I will, you know, get my feet wet yeah. by saying that I'm comfortable with identifying as Afro-Latina. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because as of right now, People won't see me as Afro Latina yeah. when they first see me. Yeah. When people first see me, they're going to see me as an African American yeah. black woman, mm-hmm. um, and they're going to treat me as such. Yeah. They're not going to treat me as an Afro Latina because yeah. you know, as ambiguous as I might appear when you mm-hmm. first meet me, yeah. you're not going to be like, "Oh yeah, yeah. she's Afro Latina." Nah, no, you're yeah. be like, "Oh no, that's a black woman. Let me treat her like a black woman." So for me, you know, I need I need to be comfortable with where I'm at first yeah. before yeah. I can take on another identity Absolutely. and represent that culture and community fully. Absolutely. You know, I can't do that right now. I feel like more people are claiming Afro-Latina more so now than ever before. 
Um, and I know there's still kind of like that colorism, uh, especially in the, the, you know, like Dominican Republic mm-hmm. or places like that where you've got the darker skin folks and then you've got light, lighter skin folks. Um, did you ever watch Love and Hip Hop Miami and... What was her name Amara La Negra, and she oh, was I love really her. R- right, and she was really pushing for like I'm Afro Latina, and you need to know this and all of that, like things that she was experiencing on that show. I mean, what would you tell her, or uh, like how would you encourage her to like push through, or you know, she dealt with a lot of ignorance, you yes. know, and from the Latino community, especially, and and even some folks from the Black community. And even Caribbean, you know, community. That's 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 any identity that mm-hmm. you you decide to take on. Yeah. Um, there's always gonna be consequences with any identity you decide to take on. Mm-hmm. Me choosing to take on just identifying as a black woman, I'm going to deal with the consequences that also um comes with. Yeah. Um with with with, with Amara, I'll just tell her to come to continue to do her because yeah. you know what she's doing for the Afro Latin mm-hmm. community is actually bringing a a, a, a new uh, movement with mm-hmm. people actually being ready to accept themselves yeah. as being Afro Latina or Afro Latino mm-hmm. or being a part of the Latin X community. As of right now, I just think that I'm not ready for that. Yeah. And the reason why I'm not ready for that, a perfect example would be, you know, if I were to go into a predominantly Latin space, I'm mm-hmm. not going to be treated as a, you know, equal counterpart. Right. You know, right. no one is going to assume that I speak Spanish. No one's going to assume that you know, my mom taught me how to make tortillas since mm-hmm. I was, you know, a younger yeah. uh, Melanie. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, no yeah. one's going to make those assumptions yeah. just by looking little, at me. Little a little M. Shaw. A little M. Shaw. <laughs> um, and, and, I, and, you know, it, it, it's, it's really about creating that connection. And mm-hmm. I operate off of building a connection. So if I walk into a Latin community and the connection is off because, you know, I'm not fluent in the language or I'm not fluent in the culture a hundred percent, then I'm going to accept that because right now yeah. I don't even think that I'm a hundred percent fluent in African-American first generation mm-hmm. American yeah. culture. So that's yeah. something that I'm trying to grapple with right now until yeah. I am able to move on to the next step yeah. of self acceptance and identity with, you know, what I'm trying to do on a day-to-day basis. So I'm not saying that I don't accept the Afro-Latina, Afro-Latin community or the movement. I'm just saying, I'm just, I'm just not at that point right now where I can, I can a hundred percent identify myself Mm -hmm. within the community because right now, you know, I'm, I'm focusing on trying to be comfortable Mm-hmm. And to be accepted yeah. as a black woman yeah. in America, which is hard, especially, you know, being biracial. It's it's yeah. it's hard. There's levels to every single thing when it comes to identity as well as acceptance. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, being an Africana studies professor, um, that comes with a great deal of responsibility. What do you th- grapple with the most as far as like, what do you see that students maybe struggle with? the most Mm. self-acceptance and I can easily just say that as quickly as I just did because semester after semester um, I will have a student that would say professor I don't identify myself as being black but apparently this is someone that is a black student this one is an african-american student but he or she doesn't want to be categorized or identified as being a black person yeah um so it's just like i think i think the the issue or not even an issue because i feel like once you label things as issue then they Mm -hmm. become they they they, they're easily to they're easy to be seen as a negative problem yeah so it's not it's not an issue it's it's really it's really creating some kind of shift or an open perspective of how students are able to view themselves as actually being being black yeah. in the country that we are that we are in right now. Yeah. No one no one wants to be considered 
black mm -hmm. or African American. Yeah. Um, even if you were to ask someone that is of a fair complexion that is a part of the African American community, mm -hmm. they will probably give you a list of different races that they think, yeah. not even going on Ancestry.com or 23 yeah. Media. Yeah. So I think what I'm trying to create right now, especially is just piggybacking yeah. into me not fully identifying myself as being Afro, um, Afro Latina, Afro -Latina. Yeah. It is, is really just self reclaiming this, yeah. this titleship of being black in America so that I can be comfortable and show my students, mm -hmm. be like that positive role model and yeah. demonstrate, you know, I, I'm identifying myself as black. There's nothing wrong with identifying mm -hmm. yourself as black. Yeah. Let's identify ourselves as black. Let's take that back. Mm -hmm. And, you know, after we take that back yeah. and identify ourselves as such, yeah. then we can move forward with 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 positivity and not yeah. look at things with a negative connotation or a stigma because of the historical context that comes behind, you know, being related or being identified as being a part of the black or African American community. That's mm -hmm. what I'm trying to do before yeah. I can move on to saying like, you know, I'm pro Afro Latina. Yeah. That's really what I'm trying to do. Yeah. Um, there's, 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 there's no shade thrown to any community. It's, mm -hmm. it's just my personal perspective based on my experience being yeah. black yeah. in this country, especially yeah. in this city. It's yeah. hard. It really is. I mean, what would you say your most memorable experience is um, with students and just as a professor in general? My most memorable experiences with students. I just had one last week. Or actually, this this week because mm -hmm. it's it's still it's still right? it's, it's, it's Friday. Fresh. Yeah. It's fresh, you know. Yeah. It feels like it's the weekend, but it's not really the weekend. So you know, yeah. it feels like yeah. it's the other week, yeah. but it's yeah. really not. Yeah. Um. Uh. So, yeah. um, I teach summer school right now, which mm -hmm. means I'm sacrificing my summer. Mm -hmm. Um. I, I'm teaching summer school right now, and the program that I teach in, um, is is known for diversity. And I love it. It's mm -hmm. a community. It's all about diversity, enrichment. Mm -hmm. However, this year we are facing just a minor problem, not even yeah. a huge problem. But out of, let's say, I'm not quite sure with the exact numbers. Let's just say, for an example, there's 200 students. Mm -hmm. We only have seven students that are part of the African-American community. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with that yeah, at all. There's still some diversity there. So... Um, uh, every Tuesday we have, um, group discussions mm -hmm. and all of the faculty professors, they facilitate the group discussions mm -hmm. and I love creating energy. So I will always volunteer myself to create the energy first, to open yeah. up the discussion, to create that energy needed to make my presence be known. Yeah. So all I did was ask the question to the entire group, to these 200 plus students, mm -hmm. how do you feel? Mm -hmm. And just that simple question stimulated one of our black students to feel comfortable enough to share her story. She felt that that was a more broad or not as general question mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. she would be able to feel comfortable enough to speak. So at that moment, I didn't really think that it was anything life changing. Yeah. However, a few hours later, I'm walking to my car, getting ready to go home. She stops me. She says, Hey, Professor Shaw. I look around, it's yeah. her. And she's thanking me for basically being a black bodied professor that's able to connect with her. And she is able to comfortably express any kind of experience that she might be able to connect to without it being centered towards another um, identifiable group. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. the, the more the more dominant um, race that yeah. we're, 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 we're seeing this yeah. summer. Yeah. So so her, you know, she she's feeling a connection with me just because I'm able to to speak. Yeah. To give her a, a platform to speak as a black student. So that's one of the, the more memorable experiences yeah. I've had with a student. And then that really makes me feel like, OK, you know, sometimes I go home and I don't feel like I'm making any kind of impact or any kind of change but it's moments like that when somebody just like stops you on the way mm -hmm. to your car and lets you and thanks you and lets yeah. you know that just because you asked one single question yeah that now they're they're comfortable with sharing their yeah. life yeah mm -hmm. what 
would you say inspired you to be a professor? Um, because I, I, I didn't make it as a writer. <laughs> <laughs> the real story. The Melody. real story. I'm always going to be honest with you because I didn't make it yeah. as a writer. But I think the only reason why I didn't make it as a writer and that I teach now is because, you know, the older you get, the more responsibility you take on. And more responsibility you take on, then you're just like yeah. not as motivated as you yeah. were when you were younger. So... Um, what is that? What is the saying? Those that teach can't do, or do, or it's. I've heard. I, I've heard, heard that. I've heard that saying. Yeah. I know what you mean, but I don't yeah. even. So, I so can't. I can't really correctly. like. I'm not fluent yeah. in that, but but yeah. but I, I feel like it's true <laughs> because it's just like I didn't really make it as a writer. However, I am able to teach or inspire, even motivate students to perform some kind of journey of self betterment when it mm-hmm. does come to you know, grappling with um, taking their writing from the ground up. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm all all, all about encouragement and support. So, you know, I'm always sending my students, the the students that I I feel that they have something Mm -hmm. there, I will always send them publications, different contests, different things that I think that their work actually might fit into and then you know i have those those emails from students that's that those thankful emails mm-hmm. professor you know my work got yeah. you know um accepted thank you so much for pointing me into the right direction yeah. and for me that 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 is enough yeah. to continue on this journey of becoming or being i'm gonna, actually i'm gonna stick with becoming because I, I feel like i'm still becoming yeah. an educator because yeah. Because you, you, you can't really just be happy or comfortable with what you're doing um, momentarily. You have to continue yeah. to grow and build and develop in anything that you do. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, I didn't make it as a writer, but I'm creating writers. I like to say that. I okay. aspire to create writers, people nice. that are going to make it in the industry and have what it takes. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. I can just sit yeah. back, relax, and watch it happen. Nice. I fell into a, I would say I fell into the the deepest, lowest part of my life journey Mm -hmm. um, back in 2014, where I was in a relationship with somebody that I thought was going to last a lifetime, but it didn't. Mm -hmm. And it happens to all of us. We're we're always in these relationships or we're always on this journey where we think something's going to have some Mm -hmm. longevity, but it does not last. And when it does not last and you're, you've completely invested your energy, you completely invested your life in this particular person Mm -hmm. or this particular thing. And then when it ends, you have nothing, you have shit. Yeah. So it's just like when that happens, you really have to reinforce yourself and start thinking about, well, you know, I don't have shit now, but what do I actually yeah. want out of my life? Absolutely. And with that particular situation, you know, I was comfortable. I didn't really have to do anything. Um, and I think it's that complacency mm-hmm. that really misguided me and distracted me from from taking or 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 yeah, getting getting my, my feet wet on this journey yeah. a sooner rather than later. Because I really yeah. feel, but I also yeah. feel a lot of people feel this way that they, they are taking their journey later than they'd want to or yeah. later than they're, they've are they been ready to. And there's absolutely yeah. nothing wrong with that. Sometimes you yeah. just have to experience life before you're, you're really ready to experience yeah. life. And I'll tell you, I experienced the bottom of fucking life that yeah. year. Yeah. So, you know, I took on retail jobs, Mm -hmm. jobs that, you know, I did not find myself relating to Mm -hmm. um, because it was higher end retail. And when you work in higher end retail, you are, you know, engrossed into a more wider and privileged Mm -hmm. uh, environment. That's not really um, healthy for someone that is a person of color's growth. Mm -hmm. And it took... It took me getting fired from a shit retail job after being broken up with yeah. that I was just like, I need to start applying myself. Mm-hmm. I need to start applying myself because yeah. I have degrees. 
Yeah. How many people can say they have degrees at my age? And I'm a very young professor. You are an extremely young I'm professor. Extremely young professor. <laughs> I just want to put that out there. Like, if y'all are just listening, make sure y'all watch the YouTube uh, episode of this and see the. Uh, I mean, the we youngness, all, the youngness, but we oh, the youthfulness. But we all know black don't crack. First black of all, don't crack. Yeah. Um, but I get. I get but I just want to say, Cody's white don't crack either. Like, I, I don't even know how old he is, no. but like, white crack. it don't crack. <laughs> <laughs> but I, but but you know, to to have accomplished what I have accomplished yeah. at my age, e- even if I'm not a full time professor right now, at least I've gotten into a career where my feet are wet. I've established myself. I've networked. People know what I'm about. People know that I'm hungry enough mm-hmm. to achieve what I want to achieve by the time that I'm thirty. Yeah, I'm not thirty yet, by the hey. way. Just FYI, doing the damn um, thing. A few years from thirty. Twenty seven. Uh, Twenty seven. So it's just like boom, I feel boom, that boom, at boom. 27, I've pretty much established myself on a career path Mm -hmm. where I feel like, you know what? There is longevity here and I need to not fuck it up. Mm -hmm. I I, I can't and I will not. And I think that's something that a lot of people really need to get their hands on. Just that one thing in their life that they know that they absolutely cannot Mm -hmm. fuck up. Yeah. Especially yeah. at 27, especially yeah. in Los Angeles. A mm-hmm. lot of people are being misguided. They're being distracted. Yes. No, you can't fuck yeah. this up. Yeah. You really just have to continue on this career path. You really have to cr- continue on this life path because yeah. that is exactly what it is. It's a life path and it is a hustle. When yeah. I tell people the things that I have to go through from semester to semester in order mm-hmm. to you know, get the classes that I'm able to teach, mm-hmm. to continue to... Re- I guess just reach a level of comfortability and stability. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people do say, well, wow, like you, 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 you've established your career, but you are still hustling. And I think that's why I've been successful because it hasn't come to a point during this path where I've reached comfort. Yeah. Like I'm not comfortable yet. Yeah. So I think once you've reached comfort, or some kind of contentment, that's mm-hmm. when things start to go completely left for yeah. you because yeah. now you don't feel like there's anywhere else for you to go. Uh, but yeah. but I'm still hustling. I Bef- am. Before we move on to the next game, I do want to ask, though, how do you balance being a professor, uh, you know, and of all of those studies, like African studies, uh, Africana studies, the writing, the public speaking, along with being a poet and managing this presence on social media that's meaningful and having a true presence. How do you balance that? See, that's what's, that's the crazy part because I feel like every time someone reaches out to me mm-hmm. and they tell me, you know, I motivate them or um, yeah. it's just like oh, I make them laugh or they needed me to make that video or just any kind of connection that's been made via Mm. social media, I'm always taken aback because, like, I don't understand how... I don't understand how a a stupid video of me ranting about somebody shouting something out of their car... (laughs) Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Yeah. Like, like reached out to to someone on social media. So Mm. my presence is just... Still a shock to me. Like your videos are great. I just want to put that there. Like I, I, I think that there's something about not only your video and the content, your presence, like the stuff that you talk about, and the balance of even the way that you post. There, there's, there's this balance, and there's this, there's this, there's a, there's they gravitate to you, and I get it. Like I like just kind of watching some of your stuff. Um, I get it. Like you, you balance the truth, like the the knowledge, the activism, with keeping it lighthearted. And whether it's some lady shouting, letting you know that the dog's feet are gonna uh, Man, get she hot. Really pissed me off. She really did. <laughs> or or today's, which really intrigued me because it kind of has been this ongoing debate. Not really a debate, a discussion, if you will. And it's just been a very fascinating 
research study. A research study. Every, of, all the research studies start on social yeah, media. They do. They because, really do. Because this generation yeah. of people are just completely yeah. hypersensitive of yeah. every single thing that's yeah. micromanaged on social yeah. media. So yeah. I always have all these questions for people yeah. that are the generation below yeah. me. Yeah. You know, like I know yeah. I'm the millennial. Yeah. And, you know, millennials yeah. are known to be just like dependent on everything. Yeah. yeah. But... I feel like the, 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 the generation below me, they're mm-hmm. dependent on the likes. They're yeah. dependent on that instant gratification yeah. that other people are able to give to them. And if they don't give it to them, then they feel like shit or like they're not successful. If they're not, they're not reaching towards something mm-hmm. if no one is liking their pictures. Yeah. And it's just the most ridiculous thing I've ever yeah. experienced in my life. And I, I don't understand. Yeah. So, so why not? you know, take my social media presence mm-hmm. and be able to just speak my truth, even if my truth isn't something that everyone is going to connect with. Mm-hmm. I'm just always going to be honest with people. Mm-hmm. Like you, like what you see is what you get. Yeah. If you ask my second grade teacher, shout out to my second grade teacher, hey. Jeremy McDavid. Second grade? McDavid. McDavid. <laughs> he will tell you that I am the very exact person I was yeah. at seven years old. Yeah. Now that's something I'm proud out of yeah to be the exact same person personality yeah. type mm-hmm. that i am now yeah 20 years later yeah like that 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 says a lot absolutely it, it really does yeah nothing can change me nothing that i go through is going to shift this personality this energy mm-hmm. this presence is always going to be fluid mm-hmm. and maintained it yeah. doesn't really matter what what's going on in my life and i yeah. think that's a lot that that that's something that a lot of people are missing yeah. within their own lives yeah. they they have yeah. to shift they have to change they have to transition they have to be something that they're actually not in order to to upkeep some yeah. kind of social media presence not yeah. even a life presence it's a social mm-hmm. media presence absolutely i mean is social media and a social media presence one of the topics that you had today was yes. do you claim your significant other on social media like do you post them yeah, on social them. media and but it was interesting of how people voted or like whether people cared or didn't care. Yeah, we should like, see what the numbers are right now. I, I don't know what the numbers are. What are the numbers now? Last last I checked, um, a lot of people were saying that it's not important. Mm. But I feel like it is important. It is important. Even for the people that, that voted that it's not important. I voted and I said that shit is important. Oh, I saw. Like, <laughs> it's important. It's like claim me. Yeah. Let me know that I'm important. Post one picture. Just, yeah, just one, one really picture. bomb picture. Yeah, and like get my get like, my good angles. Yeah. Get yeah. my right. Yeah. yeah because yeah, maybe yeah. my left is yeah. just like disproportionate. Exactly. My left maybe not so strong. Maybe not, yeah. you know, zooming on my nails yeah. that need a fill. Exactly. Like, I don't know. Exactly. But like at the same time, I feel like those those people that voted that it's not important, there, yeah. there's, there's something that yeah. might, you know. Uh, say it's not important. Oh, shit. 52. So 52. So that saying? that's late breaking news right there. That's, there uh, that's breaking news. 52% people think that it's not important to claim somebody on their social media. Yeah, I don't, I disagree. I, 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 now, I feel like they're, they're, they're not allowing themselves to be completely 100% truthful and that's all that's another that's, stipu- what, that's, that's another what stipulation that, on social media no I one think. is no one wants to be honest they're presenting themselves as single yeah even though they're with somebody exactly like no, i agree with you like because they want the attention because yeah. if you were to post a picture of your boyfriend and mm-hmm. you in a single image, you're mm-hmm. not going to get the likes from those yeah. thirsty ass niggas yeah. right. that are literally hounding you down on yeah. social media. Yeah. Like you're not going to get the likes and the likes come from men and the likes also come from women that want to be like you and women don't yes. necessarily want to be in a relationship. Yeah. They want the yeah. image of being in a relationship. They, yeah. They want, yeah. They want that social media image of wanting to the be thirst, in a relationship. Yeah. Relationship, yeah, it's, not it, really being a hundred percent in a relationship, but it's cool. But you but, know, but I'm I, saying that's but, not all women, by the no, way. No, 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 yeah, no, yeah, no. It's yeah. not. It's not all women. It's not all women. It's not hey, all women. Yeah, not yeah, all yeah, women. Yeah, yeah. I'm the same don't be tired. Don't, yeah. be, don't be. Don't be damaging. Yeah, yeah. Don't be. Uh, yeah, don't send me death threats. <laughs> don't, yeah. Right. Don't be. <laughs> don't saying, my I'm good name. I'm saying the generation below me, the young ones, the young minded ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's it maybe, but I feel like there's still older folks. 
that are doing the same thing. So I don't even think it's like a young minded a generational part, thing. a generational you thing. You might be like, right. It might not be. A it's generational just like thing. It's, it might be. It might be a evolutionary thing. Mm-hmm. And by me saying evolutionary, mm. it's because the the older folks yes. are seeing what the younger folks yeah. are doing. Yes. And like you know, it's like it's like a wolf. You're you're seeing what you gotta do to mm-hmm. get that prey, to get that food. Mm-hmm. And in order for you to get that food, you have to be able yeah. to maintain that camouflage. Yeah. And yeah. how do you maintain that camouflage? Yeah. by putting up the persona that you're living a life that you're mm-hmm. not actually living. Yeah. So it's it's evolutionary. It's, yeah. it's, it, it has to be yeah. because this is what you have to do in this day and age. Mm-hmm. That's something that my students love. That's their favorite phrase. Day <laughs> and age. Something in this day and age that you have to maintain and yeah. keep up with in order to survive when it does come to dating and maintaining any kind of relationship or yeah. connection you have with someone of the opposite opposite you gotta sex post that or, shit. or of the same sex yeah. or just hey. basically a connection yeah. that you have with someone. Yeah. No, yes. you you gotta post it. Like I'm letting the world know this is who I'm dealing with. Whether it's one picture or two pictures, five pictures, whatever, like I'm gonna post at least one picture with this woman that I'm, a, that I'm with, mm-hmm. so y'all hood boogers leave me the fuck alone. Yeah. Like, like because I, I I'm not gonna entertain it. And you out here just trying to get me in trouble. But people <laughs> like, understand that. But then there's people looking for trouble, looking for them extra hoes and bras, scallywags. But yet, but yet Cody's enjoying all of these names that I'm calling on. But, but, but a good a good example. <laughs> He's like, a good example <laughs> of that I would say is the most recent social media trend, which is on. Instagram. Mm. We all love Instagram. I do mm. too. It's my social media platform of choice. I okay. will say that. Um, Go follow her, y'all, if yeah. y'all are not following her. Um, she got some good shit on so, her. So the, 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 the most recent trend is the question, the questionnaire. Yes. It's taking over everyone's story. It sure is. So I start, I, I, I did my question uh, segment the very first day it started. So mm. I was just like, let me see what kind of questions I was going to get. I didn't get any disrespectful questions. I didn't get anything sexual. I didn't get anything about like, you know, if I'm dating anyone, I didn't get anything that made me uncomfortable. People were very respectful. Mm -hmm. They they basically asked me like, what motivates me? What are my biggest fears? Et cetera. Yeah. You go onto other people's pages. Yeah. It's disrespectful. And I don't even understand why they even post the ones that are disrespectful because that's only creating something that's cyclical, yeah. which is telling people it's okay to ask people huh. these questions. But, you know, we know who are asking these questions. It's not mm-hmm. anonymous. But at the same time, no one is disrespecting me because yeah. they know where I stand and they yeah. know who I am. But you go into other people's stories and you see the questions that they're getting and you're yeah. just like, really? Like yeah. somebody would ask this person particular person this question Mm -hmm. and you wonder why so our next game is two truths and one lie because on my whiteboard on my whiteboard i'm a little dyslexic (laughs) Mm -hmm. two truths and one lie and here's midori to explain how the game works all right. So the thing is, you say three statements. Two of them have to be the truth, and one has to be a lie. Okay, I'm good at lying. Okay. Okay. <laughs> How <laughs> does Cody feel about that? <laughs> yeah, I don't that? know if that's good or not. <laughs> <laughs> to Cody. So you say three statements. Nice. Two have to be the truth, um, and one has to be a lie. And you have to let your opponent guess which one is the lie. Okay. About yourself. Two truths, one lie. I love snowboarding. I used to be in a few commercials um, growing up. I mm, she's thinking of that used lie. to be mm. vegan for a very long time of my life. Cody did a really great job of keeping a straight face. I just want to put that out there because I was watching him and he was just like, really? That's what that's what you doing, huh? Okay. Oh, wait. So I think, uh, never mind. I did the they game were all, correctly. They, they were, were all, all true. true. <laughs> <They> were- <laughs> that's why 
why his face was so neutral. Because uh, yeah, okay. he's like, well, I mean, I see all I'm truth. Do I don't do know. I'm do it okay, again. do it again. I was just like, wait a minute. Do over, do over, do over. Yeah, watch, over. watch me say the same shit. Do over. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, let me think of some things that you haven't already stalked on social media. Shit. Uh, <laughs> damn. I was going to say, you know, I cut my all my hair off before, but I'm pretty sure you scrolled yep, all the way down. Yep, sure did. Woo. It was a great. It was a great haircut, Ooh, by the way. It was. I think it was I'm, very cute. I think I'm gonna bring that back. It was very like Neil uh, Long. Very okay. yeah. Right. Sorry. Okay, okay, okay. Go ahead. Um, I'm sorry. My dad is partially blind. He has selective sight. Um. Uh. I have one brother. Um. And I am the youngest out of. Too did many. you give? Did you give us four, <laughs> two? Did you give us four? No, I gave you. No, I gave you oh. three. Then there's one live. Okay, you said your dad is, is partially blind. Mm-hmm. You said you're the youngest. No, no, no I said I have one brother. Sorry, one brother. And sorry. then I said I'm the youngest. And then you said you're the yeah, youngest. Yeah, that was the last one. I'm just putting you in chronological order. You sure did. Yeah, I did. You are not the youngest. That is the lie. Oh, you have more than one brother. I'm the youngest. Fucking a. I'm the youngest. You have more. Th- you have two brothers. I have a lot of brothers. God damn it! I'm All gonna right. drink. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you, bro. <laughs> 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 Dang! Why uh, did you? Why did you think I wasn't the youngest? I don't know. You're very fucking mature. I don't fucking know. I was just, you know. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me, Midori. Um, let's see. Two truths, one lie. Two truths, one lie. Oh, jeez. Um, I've swam with a dolphin. Mm. I've gone skydiving. Mm. And I am the middle child. Dun, dun, dun. I want to say you swam with some wa- some dolphins. That's the lie. That's the lie. No. Okay. Yeah. You look like you're like dolphinish. Like you like you. I look fucking dolphinish. <laughs> like you look like you like some dolphins. Like I can see you like in Hawaii, maybe somewhere in French oh, Polynesia. Yeah, just like kiki, French kiki. Polynesia. Yeah, with uh, with some dolphins. Ooh, uh, like you seem like you're like you no. Know, the lie well is the lie is that unfortunately I'm the eldest sibling. I knew that. What the fuck? You do That's your research. You, you, you do your you research see, on me. You don't know. You don't. Oh seem no! Like, I just seem like a you don't mother seem hen. like a middle child because the middle child that's the has one a that's complex. forgotten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's forgotten. Well, I could be forgotten, and that's why I have a podcast. No. Oh. That's not why you have a podcast. I, yeah. <laughs> Because you're the old, you're the eldest, mm-hmm. which means you're most likely to be an extrovert and not an introvert. Ooh. The middle child would be an introvert because they're forgotten. Ooh. So therefore, you have a podcast because you like connecting and reaching out to people. Look at, look at her. Oh shit! She using that them degrees, doll. Oh shit! Okay, I just caught a chill. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Last round. Last round. Last round again? Mm-hmm. Dang, how many times? We only had one round, didn't we? Okay, oh. all right. Uh, oh, no. Okay, I, oh, I, was, I was like, you know, constructing some yeah, shit. Yeah, 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 you were. You were. Oh, I had them ready. It's because you had to do a do-over because you gave three no, I had truths. Them, I had them ready. You should have done a second round, round. Second round, there we go. Okay, we were doing a second round. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, uh, did you get a drink though? Did you take a drink? Oh, oh, but for I, getting that wrong, you need to take a drink. I, I guess I've correctly. been taking drinks. I guess correctly though. No, you you did you you, you guessed incorrectly. Oh, whatever. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's me, um, Hennessy tasting. Hey, like why isn't that a thing? Pure white. There's mold. wine. There's wine tasting. Yeah. There's a Hennessy. It's the name tasting. of the drink. It's not. It's pure white. Pure white Hennessy. Yeah, not like not like pure white. Because he went like, you know, uh, there are pure white. Yeah, I was like, people. listen, I promise. And then no there, color and lie. Then there, are, there, there, there are that category of pure white people that aren't really pure white. <laughs> Sorry. 
Good. It's okay. I'm I'm used to talking to myself because I'm, I'm the youngest. Me too. Oh, yeah. I'm not the youngest, but I'm definitely used to talking to myself. <laughs> okay, so I'm sorry. Go ahead. Two <laughs> truths, one lie. Um, I've traveled to over three countries. Um, I've had a passport since I was seven. And I just love me some white men. <laughs> I hate that Cody has been playing this game though. Like without he, being in it. He, without being in it. He looks down. He's not <laughs> looking at you to like be like, what? <laughs> like he's looking down in a way. Okay, so it was you love white men. Yeah, that's the yeah, you're going in the backwards chronological. Yes, I you know. Okay, backwards chronological, that's fine. You know, us older folks, we like to work on the present and then work back. So <laughs> love white what? men. Love white men. And then the other one was I've had a passport since I was since seven. Since you were seven, and then the other one I've traveled to more than three countries. You've traveled to more than three countries? That's true. No, I I was clarifying. I was clarifying, yeah. Oh, then that's false. That could be false. It could be false. I was saying that's true that that's Cody is very confused right now. Let me tell you. Okay, so why. I'm going to say number one is a lie. Dun, dun, you don't think dun. I'm well traveled? I think you are well traveled, but. I don't come across as well traveled. I think you? you do. But I feel like you had a passport, like for real, at seven. Your dad is an entertainer. You had a passport. Did you just outside. like deep gulp? I heard your gulp. I have a lot of saliva when I drink. <laughs> <laughs> so which one was the lie? I love me some white men. That wasn't a lie. Yeah, it was a lie. I love me some black men. So was Cody giving you a ride home? Like I'm confused right now. Just I feel like I need to take a pee break. Cody. Okay, I, I know, because I've been talking about Cody all Just evening. Just because you're in a relationship with someone doesn't mean you particularly, like... Oh, my God. I feel like... Oh, like, my God. I, I feel like I need to go to the bathroom right now. Uh, like, yeah, like, I love... Okay, I love, so Cody... I love Cody. He's so Cody... White, it, Cody... I would, I would so Cody... I would, I, sometimes I dream he's black. <laughs> Low-key, I feel... He's white chocolate. I'm just going to put that out there. The flavor, the flavor that I got was white chocolate. <laughs> Um, he gave me that strong white chocolate vibe. Uh, but he's like the he's like in the mid range. So, so we have to we have to introduce him though. Yes. Cody is here. Pick up his lady, <laughs> Melanie Shaw. Yeah, give him a full sentence though. A full sentence. Yeah, to make them confused. Uh, hey. hey, see white chocolate. It's gonna be a long ride home. Oh <laughs> shit! <laughs> shit! Maybe we should do this. <laughs> like you know, like y'all, y'all know. Like sometimes I just visualize myself with, with the you know. Have we had too much Hennessy? I feel like we're crossing <laughs> lines right now. I feel, like that pure white is like doing too much, and I like it's not about pure white right it's now. Like a Kofi type. Oh shit! Uh, Queen Sugar. <laughs> I don't even watch Queen Sugar, but I know what. <laughs> But I know a Kofi, and he was hella dark, and like shout out Kofi. But I feel like this is a, this is not what I signed up for, y'all. Uh, my heart goes out to Cody right now. Uh, Much appreciated. Uh, so Cody was here to pick up his lady. Um, now he's not. Now I'm leaving. Uh, he's got a great sense of humor. Cody, how do you deal with that? Oh, I don't. Being oh, <laughs> but I, but you know, being the the, prof, the 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 white boyfriend to the Africana studies professor, like how is how is that for you? I I hate uh, to put you on the spot, no, like, but I just feel like that's such an interesting point of view, though. I mean, to be honest, I've never actually dated a white woman. Hey, my whole life. hey, me neither. <laughs> <laughs> me neither. <laughs> so you understand? <laughs> we got a we got a line. <laughs> it's not, I mean, I don't know. It's just it's it's never been an odd situation for me because I've mm-hmm. already been through a lot of the 
the odd looks and things mm-hmm. when I'll go to like the Inland Empire or whatever mm-hmm. with uh, one of my ex girlfriends. We'd get a lot of, you know, dirty looks and things mm-hmm. like that from, you know, from either black men or from mm-hmm. black women or white men, white women, whatever. So I've kind of experienced a little bit of it all. But I mean, a lot of the people that I meet that um, are in her circle or in my circle are both very, you know, very accepting and very loving. So yeah. Yeah. I haven't really dealt with anything that's been. Um, that brought any adversity to like our relationship from, yeah. you know, like a color standpoint or anything yeah. like that. So yeah, and I just want to shout out to all my friends because they're also all yeah. in yeah. interracial relationships. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, they're all in. Inter- yeah. Do, okay, so when I first learned about you and heard about you, it Before just you started stalking me. Yes, I was stalking your life. I didn't know about Cody. Okay. I knew Cody <laughs> existed, but I didn't know Cody. Um, there's a Cody. Um, <laughs> my little shamrock shake over here. This is shamrock <laughs> shake. He's got the lucky, you know, got the shamrock. He's representing. I have to. Um, and you straight up called him a ginger. So, you know, we all family. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> it reminded me of the character of Sam in Dear White People. Did you, have you seen Dear White People? I seen their white people i've actually had uh students Mm -hmm. that told me that i remind them of sam because like i said once again i'm very open with every single thing i do in my life because Mm -hmm. i i I operate on this functionality that you can't give me something without me giving you something so i'm open with my life yeah and that's because i want people to understand my truth Mm -hmm. and then establish their truth by giving that call and response type of feedback by giving me a little something as well yeah so my students they, they they know i'm in a interracial relationships and they know the way my mind processes mm-hmm. and they know you know the things that i believe in and my morals and my ethics um so i get that all the time that hey professor shaw have you seen dare white people i'm i'm just yes. like yeah i pray yeah, yeah. I want, I've, I've seen yeah. dear white people, but yeah. then I, I already know where the conversation is going. So, you know, I'll say something like, you know, have you seen 13 reasons why? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> how do you, how do you balance that though? Like, do you get any kind of commentary from like maybe the Africana studies department or, oh yes, you know, really no, well, not department. Uh, my my department is is completely diverse. We have mm-hmm. two white professors teaching in our department and holding shit down. They are strong white women, and I nice. can say that they are really um, a part of the backbone. A part, yeah. not the the full backbone, yeah. but a part of the backbone yeah. of what is really holding the department together with outreach, student outreach, yeah. Yeah. Um, and being completely knowledgeable with how to reach out to students when it does yeah. come to advisement or anything that comes with um, education or mm. wisdom or knowledge. Like they, they are the ones to go to yeah um however i do get um i do get backlash from um other people Mm -hmm. um most recently i think it was last semester not this semester um i would say last fall Mm -hmm. um, of 2017 that i actually participated in a meet the faculty type of interview and i posted Mm -hmm. that to my social media Mm -hmm. and once i went on to like my story feed Mm -hmm. there were people that were actually reposting my video and asking the question how can this person be a person of color and a proud um, educator in the africana studies department and dating a white man Mm. Or I've had people slip in my DMs and ask me, like, how is it dating someone that is white, but you're supposed to be teaching our black students? Like, how is that? Mm -hmm. And I think the two aren't related at all. Just because, you know, my love interest has happened to be someone that I fell in love with that's a white man. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean that I'm not going to be a black activist. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean that I'm not going to carry on, you know, the black experience. I very much experience what it means to be a black woman on a day-to-day basis, regardless of you know me dating someone that is you know white chocolate mm-hmm. hey hey you know it's not like you're gonna be the leader of the kkk like he, you know he he's no. got an appreciation for you and you got no. an appreciation yeah. for him yeah, and, appreciate- and 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 you still support the people in the community and in africana studies like it's 
it, it, it is always very interesting to hear people's thought process of, of how they... Oh, very interesting. Yeah. And people, they maintain their thought process because I I think probably the, the most um, disrespectful, not really disrespectful because I didn't really take it as being disrespectful, mm. but it, it did catch me off guard. Yeah. I would say it was one of my students actually gave their final speech in my public speaking class mm-hmm. of why... Um, black relationships are the best relationships and then in her her speech or her powerpoint presentation she actually gave examples of why biracial or interracial relationships do not last or why they don't work in the black community what and this this comes a very this is their this final speech which means i've already revealed a part of my life to my yeah. students letting them yeah. know that i am with a white man so she already had that knowledge so she presented that that what? that speech knowing that I was in an interracial yeah. relationship. So, you know, not I can't say disrespectful because it isn't a learning environment. So, mm-hmm. you know, I can't be offended by the things they, that they yeah, have to be allowed they, to explore they, they have that. To be allowed to explore yeah. and I fully understand that. I fully accept yeah. that. You know, it was a great speech. I'm gonna yeah. point that out. It was organized. Mm-hmm. She she actually demonstrated every single thing that we went over in the entire yeah. semester. So yeah. like kudos to her. Like she got yeah. an A. Yeah. Like, you know, but at the same time it's just like, you know, at the end of the day, you go home after seeing that particular speech, listening to it, experiencing it, and then that really has some kind of um, some kind of trauma that continues to backlash towards yeah. you know the, this, this this reoccurring questioning that you have in your life: Am I doing the correct thing? Yeah. Am I on the correct path? Yeah. Am I dating someone that is? right for my lifestyle yeah. and if he isn't right for my lifestyle then you know maybe i shouldn't be with him because mm-hmm. he's white yeah it's just this questions that continue to you know yeah. stipulate whenever you 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 have those stipulations yeah. what would you say the biggest misconception of melanie the professor and the individual are the biggest misconception would be that People feel that because I am a professor and mm-hmm. I've maintained this status as being an educator, mm-hmm. that I can't be 27 years old. Mm. Mm-hmm. And there's really like this thin line of, you know, what pictures should I post on social media? Mm-hmm. Should I, you know, post pictures of me drinking? Should yeah. I, you know, watch any kind of profanity that might be in any of my captions mm-hmm. or even in my stories, which is where a lot of people normally connect with me. Mm-hmm. Um, so the mis- the misconception is that I'm unable to maintain myself. Um, as a 27 year old woman, still mm-hmm. youthful, you know, still yeah. wanting to go to like pool parties in Vegas and like turn up whenever yeah. I can. Yeah. Um, but you know, everyone has an opinion about, you know, what your lifestyle should mm-hmm. look like if you are, you know, going down a particular career yeah. path. Yeah. And I, I just very much want to say that I, I am young and I want to continue to be young and ins- yeah. experience things without people having to dictate what I can and cannot say and what I can and cannot post because mm-hmm. when that happens then that's when you lose your connection to other people that you know can connect with yeah. you and ex- experience things the way you experience things and vice versa I'm yeah. experiencing things that they're experiencing and then you know you have that commonality once again that we yeah. actually share something we have something in common like absolutely it's, you know it's all about networking and yeah. connecting but I find myself questioning things all the time yeah. before I post like I, yeah. I I'll, I'll probably think for an entire hour before I post something yeah yeah, because yeah. I'm just like, is this inappropriate? <laughs> like, yeah. you know, am I, co- yeah. am I covering enough? Like, yeah. are my tattoos showing? Like, yeah. you know, yeah. like, you know, am I drinking too much? Am I am I saying too much about my personal life? That's mm-hmm. that someone is going to take. Yeah, you know, out of context. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, misconception is that because you are an educator. You that can't you don't have live a life. your life. Yeah. 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 <laughs> live your life like it's golden out live, here. Live your life. Yeah. Because, you know, yeah. it's not it's not really hurting anyone. Yeah. Just actually live your life. Yeah, it's absolutely. It's going to hurt you if you don't live your life. And you're exactly. like 80 years old and be like, oh, yeah. I didn't do this. Yeah, that's yeah. very true. Mm-hmm. And then you just become resentful of all the yeah. 
fucking students that you taught because <laughs> they were being judgmental assholes. It's not even the students. It's yeah. just people in your inner circles. I feel yeah. like the closer people are to you, the more judgmental they're going to be. Because mm. they, they, yeah, it's not even the yeah. students. My students yeah. love me. They yeah. love every single thing I'm able to share with them and experience yeah. with them. It's more yeah. so your the personal people, circle. Yeah, it's yeah. a personal circle. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or not even personal circle because everyone that I, I, I ha- I've maintained or established mm. my personal circle with, they're very mm. supportive. It's more so the, the, the lingering followers yeah. or like the people that yeah. have met me once or twice or people that are. And then are, all of a sudden think they yeah, know you they, after also, meeting yeah, you only twice. Like, yeah. No, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's not even like, you know, personal yeah. circle. It's more yeah. so the people that, 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 that want to be in my personal circle. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, I, I, I understand. Um, so usually before we get out of here, we always leave people with words of wisdom. So please share some words of wisdom and how the people can reach you. Words of wisdom. I'm going to just give you what I always tell people. Okay. Um, whether it's social media or my students mm-hmm. or, you know, just like, you know, in my relationship with any of my friends. I always mm-hmm. tell people... Everything is temporary. Yeah. Yes. yes. Everything is temporary. It's something that I live by. It's something that I breathe by. It's mm-hmm. something that I work by because it is actually tattooed on my skin and in nice. my flesh because everything is temporary. And so is this tattoo mm-hmm. once I leave this earth. Yep. And I feel like a lot of people put too much of their time and energy and their presence and things that are just short lived. Yeah. Just as everything is in this, in this life and on this planet like yeah. you know you're you let's say you break up with your significant other and mm-hmm. you're devastated and you're in deep depression and you don't think that things are going to look up for you they will mm-hmm. like they will like i've been in the deepest darkest pits yeah. of shit mm-hmm. and at the same time like i've i've survived that And, you know, look what I'm doing now. Like I'm happy, I'm focused, I'm moving forward. And that's, and that too is temporary. This happiness, you know, some days I wake up and I feel like shit and I'm depressed again Mm -hmm. because happiness is just as temporary as depression and Mm -hmm. sadness and Mm -hmm. anger and any other experience that you might experience Mm -hmm. in this life. Yeah. It's all temporary. You got, you got promoted to a higher position, that's temporary as well yep. because you're going to age. Someone's going to be younger than you. They're going to take that position from right under you. Mm-hmm. And it, the cycle continues. Yeah. So it's not even a negative or a positive outlook yeah. on life. It's yeah. just a factual outlook on life. Mm-hmm. And to continue to understand that everything, including your life, mm-hmm. including the breath that you breathe, mm-hmm. is temporary. It is. And mm-hmm. make the most of it. So live your life. Yeah. That's what I do. That's why I'm so reckless. That's why I'm so impulsive. <laughs> That's why I make mistakes every single day. And I'm actually proud of my yeah. mistakes. I don't count them as being regrets. Yeah. I count my mistakes as being life experiences because yeah. shit, we're all yeah. living. We are all practicing this experience yeah. together. Yeah. I, don't, I don't have regrets. I have life experiences because yeah. I know I fuck up every single day. Yeah. Yeah. It's just accepting your fuck up. Yeah. Because you know what? Everything is temporary. Yeah, that's true. Cody, do you have any words of wisdom for us? <laughs> um, Fresh off the gym. I mean, <laughs> for me, my biggest thing is... Uh, Go ahead just and not... speak for us. Yeah, because he be whispering. I don't <laughs> understand. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it. I'm a soft-spoken man, so... <laughs> It's all right. Um, it's yeah, I'm not so no, yeah. that's why it works out because she does most of the talking. So, yeah. <laughs> um, I would say honestly, you know, it's just for me, my biggest thing is just don't give up. Mm-hmm. Like it doesn't, as corny as that may sound and everything, but it applies to anything in life. You know, it applies to relationships. It applies to, you know, dreams, goals, whatever. It doesn't doesn't really matter how how much you feel like you're failing at something. The more you're failing, the more you're going to continue to try. And if, you know, at the end of the day, it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out, but you you see something through to the end. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? When you give up on stuff, that's when, like she said, you have regrets and you mm-hmm. have all these kind of like hangups on life and, and things that hold you back mentally mm-hmm. and emotionally and physically and everything else. But if you see something through to the end, whether it works out or it doesn't, you can, you can move on, you can move mm-hmm. forward in life. So it's mm-hmm. like, as long as you just see something through to the end, you give it your all, whatever, you know, that's when you're going to be 
the happiest version of yourself Mm -hmm. because you you don't have anything to look back and say, I wish I would have, I could have, I should have and all that. It's just, you know, I gave him all and I can move forward. So what Mm -hmm. he's really saying Uh. (laughs) is reckless as fuck. (laughs) And this that's is why Shelby, it was. That's where yeah. Shelby this is. Yes, the Shelby is in the Breathless. building. Finally, welcome, Shelby. Welcome. I, I had to operate on doing, yes. doing, doing something that's gonna make you at the end of the night mm-hmm. just question your life. Yes. Like, oh, why I do did that I, every day. Like, <laughs> why did I do that? But then you wake up the next morning and you're a better person because you know you're not gonna do that shit again. There you go. Mm-hmm. Boom. And it just hit me just now. Um, you know, as they say, be patient, be reckless. You know, remember why you're patient. Remember why you woke up. Remember what your grind is. Remember what your purpose is. Because when shit gets fuzzy, shit gets blurry, remember why the fuck you woke up. And remember why it is what you do what you do. And remember it is what you want. Um, And that's my words of wisdom. That was very, like, gritty. That was very gritty. Remember. You kind of got dark there. I know. Yeah, remember why you woke up. Remember. Remember. Remember why you woke up. You know, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you, you woke up. You're not you dead. Up. But remember why you like, woke up. Like remember what the purpose. Remember what the purpose was. Remember what it is that you dreamed you've always wanted to do and fucking do it. And we support you and come on the fucking show, do what you do. Like, we we going to talk. But, like, be great. Don't let all of these uh, extra opinions fucking fuck with your shit. Be strong in your truth. Be great in your truth. And we support you at Jam Pack. Instagram mm. is pretty much the only social media that I maintain and operate because Woo. I think mm. Facebook, is, Facebook is for old people <laughs> and Twitter uh, Twitter is just for people that... What you say? That's going to talk I'm shit. Yeah, so you know, Instagram is for connecting. Facebook. It's like that, that, you know, that middle range. So you can find me on Instagram at Mel B. 414 once again that's Mel B 414 that's M E L because that's a shortened uh, hey. extension of my name yeah. uh Melanie uh M E L B as in the letter B 414 so Ooh. please follow me and I'll follow you back maybe you follow back maybe maybe you might you know depending you might follow the, back. The, the, the pen, depending on what it is like i like you know those those uh pages that follow you that be selling bundles <laughs> like you know <laughs> get my hopes up yeah i'm so mad at that like that is a very real like thing. if you if you selling yeah. bundles yeah. or makeup or like yeah. yeah like i'm not i'm not about makeup i'm not about bundles cody how can we reach you uh, you can reach me on Instagram as well, Thor Fitness Twenty Two. Hey. You look at the little icon and the one that looks like a Viking. Thor, so, Fitness. Thor, Thor Fitness. Because if you want that Thor Fitness, you know, <laughs> you come. I don't know. I don't know if I want that. <laughs> you don't know if you want. That. I mean, I you with that? So. The- so yeah, if you're looking for like exercise stuff, I'm your guy. Go ahead and follow me, Thor Fitness Twenty Two. Uh, it's also my email, so. If- Okay. Anything, feel free to reach out nice. to me. If questions, anything. All right, there you go. Uh, also, if you want to be a guest on Jam Packed, there's an email address. Go ahead and bless the people with this. an email address. Uh, you can get go ahead and reach out to Love Dory. It's L U V D O R I at jampackedshow.com. Boom. Check us out on Jam Packed at Jam Packed Show on Instagram, Twitter. Uh, make sure you follow us, like us, share us on Facebook. I really had to clap under the desk because I was that adamant about it. And make sure that you check out every single episode on YouTube because, trust me, you don't want to miss a motherfucking thing. So make sure you check us out every Wednesday. We are available on Spotify, on uh, SoundCloud, on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, as well as Google Play. That's very exciting. So check us out every Wednesday, and we will see you on the next Jam Packed. Peace out, peace out, yo. Permanent, we go back.